Are we live? Are we live? Happy Tasty Thursday in what will be known as the uh, sort of summer finale of Tasty Thursday. Although I'm almost certain that we will be shooting our September Tasty Thursday outside because I have a vision. I have a vision of a little fire. I have a vision of a s'more situation. I have a vision. So I'm excited. It kicked tonight. It's like the end of the summer themed Tasty Thursdays, uh, the grilling season of Tasty Thursday, even though next week we are gonna be hit with 100 degree temperatures, but I digress. Um, of course, you know me, your host, Laura Vitale, the OG of the cooking on YouTube. Um, and I couldn't pull off Tasty Thursdays without a partner in crime. My partner in crime today is back from his Greece adventure. M to the G, the godfather of all godfather. I present to you our bartender, Mike Janovies. Mike G, Mike G. Glasses off, baby. It's getting on. It's getting on. Um, Happy to be back. We have... I have a, a menu. Because I figured like I wanted to do like a almost like a classic summer American menu to end the... Tasty Thursday summer edition, but I also felt like this menu was pretty dang gone perfect for Labor Day. We're doing barbecue chicken, which I'm turning into barbecue chicken sandwiches on top of brioche with tangy slaw, pickles, and some hot honey. Because yes, I am. We're doing my famous corn on the cob because it is the best corn on the cob you will ever have in your entire oh, yeah. life. Oh yeah. We are making my favorite potato salad, which is highly designed and created and crafted after Joe's Poultry's potato salad. Oof. And when I tell people on. that I like my potato salad very mashed, they're like, what? It has to be really chunky. I'm like, you don't understand. What, how, like my favorite potato salad comes from a very specific place and it is almost mashed. It is delicious and divine and you will love it. Mm. A tangy slaw to go with. Bartender on drinks. It's party time, baby. Woo! You can lead off with what uh, the drink is going to be in just a second. But because I have so much to do, I want to get the big stuff out of the way first. Back here, I have my burner, as you know, as you love. Big, big pot with lots and lots of water to make the best corn ever. You're gonna add some milk. It looks crazy, but don't knock it till you try it. Once you try it, you'll understand why it is the best corn you'll ever have in your entire life. Then you need some butter. I know it might sound crazy, but you're gonna have to just trust the process. It ain't crazy, boo. A healthy pinch of salt or two. And then to enhance the sweetness of the corn, you don't have to do this, but I do. In this gigantic pot, I'm only gonna add like a tablespoon or two of sugar. Not much, but it enhances the sweetness of the corn. Don't ask me why Jersey corn is white. It is. I don't know why. I don't make the rules. I don't farm. I buy it from the farmers, but I don't farm it. I know people are like, you got to buy yellow corn. I buy Jersey corn. And if it's yellow one year, it's yellow. If it's white another year, it's white. You're going to add your corn to the water. You're going to let that boil for an hour. I'm not, I'm not the boss. Okay. I just know that this is what works. And I just know that if you want really good corn on the cob, this is how you make it. And if you want to make really good corn, cheddar soup, corn chowder, whatever, you're going to use the water from this after it's done cooking as your base for that soup. So I'm going to work on the next thing while Mike gives you a rundown of the drink. But what I'm going to work on next, which is very boring, I'm going to peel some potatoes for my potato salad. So M to the G, take it away. Laura, first of all, nothing you do is boring, obviously. Nothing you do is boring. That's why I'm over here all the time, you know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so we're doing a peach sangria. Uh, as I posted on my Insta, Insta John stories earlier uh, today, yesterday, I, I put the recipe up there, but um, I'll give it to you, I'll give it to you straight. So I did a last minute wine sub out because our besties next door or behind us or whatever own a winery. So I, or whatever, wherever they are, they're right down the road, right? So um, Wagon House Winery, right? Beautiful wine, sweet. I was a sommelier for them during COVID, right? I went over there and helped them out because they're a small family, you know, they're awesome. They are and, uh, awesome, and and we still got to take Dan out for his 50th birthday. Yes. Where, where are the horns at? Where are the horns at? Where's the horn for Dan's uh, birthday? My horn for the Dan. horn for Dan's birthday. Happy, happy birthday, Dan! Happy birthday, my man Dan. He looks like he looks like not a day over 40. My man Dan's not a day over 40. I'll tell you what. So um, anyway. I got this over here, this 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 uh, beautiful, it's called Shore Thang. Which, Shore if Thang. you know, you know it's my favorite wine of all times. If you want summer in a bottle, this is what it is. That's what you get. Yeah, so uh, you typically when I pair up this wine, 
in the winery when I was next, well, wherever in the winery, um, I would pair it with uh, like a coconut shrimp or like a really a good salty cheese, uh, just because it just, it pairs off really well, comes off really well with it. So, and I like when you hit the bottom, it just sounds cool, right? So, uh, so yeah, so what it is, is it's gonna be some, um, a beautiful, uh, beautiful short, short thing, right? Short thing. Um, then we got, I got the peach schnapps going on. So I got a big bottle here that's almost empty because peach schnapps is like a, you know, it's like a dime a dozen here. We love our peach schnapps, mm -hmm. especially Laura. Um, <laughs> it's, listen, we'll go back, okay? That's the era where I was banned from Wildwood, okay? That's like, that's like early 2000s, early 2000s Laura. You know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Um, good times, very good times, by the way. Um, so we got, we got our beautiful wine here. Um, I'm gonna throw in peach schnapps, a splash of OJ. I'm gonna do a, uh, a lime and an orange garnish. And then um, another cool thing I have here too is I, I blend it up, or actually Laura, help me blend up. Um, I froze fresh peaches overnight, blended it in here with some kava kava oranges because they're the best oranges. And Laura found them, thank you, Laura. She's amazing at shopping for me whenever I send her a list. And, and JoJo is too, obviously. I but, was gonna uh, say, which one, which one in this house does the shopping? I always find what you ask for. You guys, you, guys okay, I, you can't do that to me. You I can't do that to always me. get what you <laughs> like ask saying, for. Which, which, it's like saying which brother or sister is your favorite. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't do that. I no, can't you can't do that. The answer's obvious, but you can't say that. I know, I can't. It's obvious. We all know. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's Joe. Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's not Joe. I love Remember it. who feeds you. I know, I know. And you do feed me well, obviously. Um, keep my calorie count high because this body is on peak performance. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is a peach sorbet, kind of, right? It's just fresh peaches, kava kava orange, uh, thrown in there for a little bit of acidity. And it's not sweet, it's very tart, which is nice, because the sweetness of the wine and the tang and the um, and your beautiful peach tree snaps here will make it nice and, and, and fresh and delicious. I'm gonna finish it off with, a, with an, um, an uh, amarena cherry as well, just one, just for some uh, color. And that should be it. So I'm gonna put it in the shaker. You'll see me doing it throughout the thing because I know I gotta cut back to Laura in a minute when she's done cutting. But um, people I do want to know out. really quickly, really, really quickly. People want to know how was Greece and did you miss us? Um, I missed you terribly. Uh, I, I must have gotten 15 text messages from Laura. You can't leave me again for this long, um, which you know it feels I, very rude. Uh, you know, I'll tell you. You so, did it to me last summer when we went to Italy without you. I know, I know. I was really sad last summer. I should have, I should have came, but. Um, I, 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 Greece was amazing. I thought of you guys every day. Um, obviously, I, we texted each other mo and stuff multiple times, but you know, obviously. Uh, beaches were amazing. The beaches were actually one of the most stunning beaches I've ever seen in my life. I, I started swimming out a couple feet. I'm like swimming, 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 swimming. You know, actually I float because you know, big guys float pretty well. Uh, but I floated out like 10 feet, looked down, clear. Then I swam out another 10 feet, looked down in 30 feet of water, crystal clear. So, I'd recommend the Grecian islands. I was in the island called Karpathos. I'm probably not saying it right. I'd probably, you know, my best. And I learned a couple different uh, Greek words while I was there, but I'm not gonna repeat them because um, they're not very, you know, not very kosher, I guess you could say. But anyway, the food was great. I ate a lot of Slovakia. Um, I brought home this beautiful, so I got a little, a little friend for my big friend here. So if you can see the, I'll hold it up here for Joe. Um, so my big friend, this was from Cantina del Vesuvio in Italy, in Naples, right? In uh, Mount Vesuvius. And this is from Olimbo, right? Olimbo. Um, and this is the oldest city on the island of Carpathos. Um, it's, it was, I bought it from a little old lady in a shop. Beautiful. Uh, reminding me of this one kind of made me feel like I'm buying a little friend for the big friend. I gave it to Joan Laura as a gift because... I love her. You know, why not? It's a little chicky, a little chicky, right? I so, love her. Um, so yeah, one of the many gifts I brought home, uh, Joe and Laura and, and Mia, I got a little gift for too. That was another Dead. cool thing. I got her a little piece, a little heart jewelry. Cause you know, she's my heart. So Aww. my goddaughter. So, um, so yeah, Greece was great. Had a good time. Had a lot of Slovakia and a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of Yudo, a lot of tzatziki, a lot of, um, uh, what was it? Cheese. Saganaki. Uh, Saganaki was amazing. Um, I came back with a slight case of gout for the first time in my life. But I think that's from sitting on the plane, so I'm good. Good, got a, share, a steroid shot in there. Big Daddy's moving. I'm moving. I'm happy. Just gonna start walking Nothing my five like miles. A shot in the glute to get you going. Oh yeah. I also, <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that story, but thank you, Joe. Um, when I first got there, I got a bout of uh, tonsillitis. So I went to this. I found on the island there was a Greek doctor named Socrates, and I figured he's a philosopher, so he might, he must be good, right? So I walk over to his place. It says he's a surgeon. He's a he's a he's a doctor. And uh, I'm like, hey, I have really bad, I can't breathe out of my throat. My throat's closed up here. Yeah. I'm about to die. My, my fingers are turning purple. What can you do for me? He looks in, he smells like, you know, 
a pack of whatever cigarettes he was smoking that day, looks it down my throat and says, not good. I don't know how you breathe. Your hole this big to breathe through. Hey, babe. And I was like, thank you, Socrates. Need a new gas tank. For this one. Oh. For that one? Yeah. New gas you tank. Got it, baby. So anyway, Socrates comes up to me and goes, you're not good. So he says, I take care of you. He gives me a, a five-day Cipro and, a, and his beautiful nurse comes over <laughs> with this long needle and uh, goes right in the butt. Right in the butt. Right in the glute. Uh, yeah. I reenact. Ready? Yeah, ready, ready. I don't know where the camera is. I bent over like hey, this. Am I, on? I, I was crying. Am I on? Okay, this is me crying right now. I'm, I'm sobbing. I'm the nurse. Okay, ready? And I was like, oh, oh, God. Oh, God. No mas. No mas. Yes. I don't know how to speak Greek, but I can speak Greek, but I can speak a little Spanish. Yeah. No mas vino. Yes. No mas Slovaki. Yes. No mas hero. Yes. Okay? See? Bye bye. But the good thing is, um, I'm not speak for you. hopefully it's a one-time thing with the with the with the gout. It's a small bout. It's no big deal. I'm okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't need any. I don't need any tips in my DMs about you know watching what I eat because I, I do very well. And thank you. Um, and I also walk you know mm -hmm. five miles a day when I'm not hurting not my foot. Yeah. So um, yeah. So otherwise, Socrates did a great job. I was healed up. I could breathe Ooh, again. I smell it really and strong. it was it was I was able to keep going on my trip. Actually, I didn't let it stop me. I still went to the beaches. Still did walking. And it's like a mountain there, so you're uphill all day. And I'm sweating. It's beautiful. I love the sweats. So mm -hmm. other than the meat sweats, I got the walking uphill sweats all day. A lot more, like a mafi almost. Very much like a mafi, actually. Yeah. Well, sort of. Yeah. A mafi is really one of a kind, but where we're going next year, Ugh. it's going to be pretty Mod spectacular. On. I can't wait. I know. I can't It's going to be pretty spectacular. Um, I don't think the camera's on you, though. So the camera's on me, and Joe just ran away. So Joe wants to get a gas tank, and I'm just letting the wanna, camera be on the star. Do you want to come over here with me? Uh, while we wait for Joe, I want to show you my potatoes. Look at these beautiful potatoes. That I just cubed up so nicely. Wait, is that? I don't know. That's the husk from the corn. Oh. No, it doesn't. They can't hear me. That when you boil corn for an hour, it does not get mushy. It just gets cooked perfectly literally perfectly you well remember the water is not up to a boil yet so it's going to take a good 20 minutes for the water to come up to a boil so you're really only cooking it for a half an hour i would prefer to cook it longer because i don't like i either like my corn to be raw or i like it to be really cooked and sweet but it doesn't get mushy it's literal perfection but i wanted to show you my potatoes before i put them in the water because they just need to cook until they're soft Okay, I had to replace a propane okay. tank. For whatever reason, the new one was leaky, but we are back in action. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to make the uh, drink now. So, uh, Joe, you can cut to whoever you want. You can cut the meat, you can cut the Laura. I'm going to keep it occupied over here, or Laura's going to keep it occupied. Whatever you need I'm to do. I'm going to get a nice close-up of what you're making there. I got uh, camera one's pointing right at the bar table there. It's a beautiful shot. I think you're going to love it. And also, thank you all for your, the welcome backs. I see them all in the, in the chat. Um, you know, I really, uh, and I am Italian, yes. I'm like 80% Italian as part of Ancestry.com. Don't Google my last name because you'll find out my family history. But uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, um, Greece was amazing. And thank you so much for everyone for saying welcome back. I miss you all too, very much. So thank you. All good with the propane over there, honey? Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, um, I love a pickle. Anybody else? Just I love a pickle. It's got to be dill, though. You come at me with a bread and butter? Uh-uh. Oh, mm. for those that are just joining, why? Mm. I shoved the pickle in my mouth. <laughs> I couldn't talk. For those of us joining us, this is the end. Well, not the end. I hate to keep calling it that. It's this not the is end. like the last season of the summer edition of Tasty Thursdays. So we're doing a classic American summer grilling menu that I just didn't realize that would be perfect for Labor Day, but it is perfect for Labor Day. We're doing barbecue chicken, which I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. That way I can put them on brioche sandwiches with tangy slaw and pickles and hot honey. Um, the best corn on the cob on the entire planet. We're doing a tangy slaw, potato salad, and potato salad. Um, so, all delicious things. The weather is spectacular. Like, it literally feels incredible out here. I don't know what, if we could have this all year, I would welcome it. I think it's like 77 right now. It's beautiful out. It's beautiful. I'm gonna eat outside tonight, so it's gonna be really beautiful. Um, anyway, I digress. Mike's making a drink. I wanna know where you guys are watching from 
and then I'm going to start getting through your questions. If you guys can start throwing in questions in the chat, I will get back. We'll get to as many of them as I can. Um, dessert. I don't have time for dessert. If I had time for dessert, I would make like a peach blackberry cobbler, which may not or may not be coming to a reels near you in the near future. I just like, it looks like I fell on my keyboard, a bunch of buttons. I'm sorry about that. I just had like people watching, saw a bunch of cameras. Uh, go ahead. Sorry about that. Okay. Keep going. Can I add, Laura, can I add that the, uh, I, I want to say that you can pair this for a dessert. This, this meal right here, this, this drink and this meal with your wonderful peach rose sorbet on laurainthekitchen.com. Oh yeah, peach rose sorbet is The pretty peach delicious. rose sorbet was one of the best things I've ever had of Lara's. It just, it just is perfect and it's nice and it just goes along with the peach theme and it makes you feel like you're, you're in heaven. So. And let me explain to you something on that note because you just made up, you, brought, you reminded me of something really great. The peach sure. rose sorbet calls for an ice cream machine where you have to churn the sorbet. But you really don't. If you freeze peaches, if you make your peach mixture and then freeze the peaches and then pop them in a food processor with your rosé, you get a sorbet-like texture in yep. your food processor. You do, you, you do that, first you, you, take, you take your cell phone, you call Wagon House Winery and bling, 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 <laughs> bling, bling. Yes, hi, can I order a few bottles of rosé? And, and throw in a sure thing too because Laura loves it and I can trust Laura's opinion, so throw it in there. Once it arrives, you make a peach rosé sorbet. Bing, bong. Perfect. Bing bong. Bing bong. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm excited to, for you to try this, Laura. I think this is right up your alley, this I'm drink. like really ready. It's gonna be amazing. And I know I'm taking a long time to make it, so I apologize. It's, it's okay, just... it's oh, okay. Mike, the Mike corn if you can move boiling. the toothpicks for just a second, I'll get a real nice close up of what you're doing. Oh, sure, you got it, you got it, Jojo. Oh, Anything you need, go. baby, I got so what you. What do we got going? What's Everywhere, that? what do we got going? So right now I'm just slicing up the garnishes for the, for the drinks. So um, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be special, it just has to be nice, right? <laughs> So um, this this knife is not cutting for some reason, but um, but yeah, that so is I'm, not a good knife, just so you know. I, I, yeah, I'm finding it out live <laughs> on camera. This is great, live and in color. We're finding out this is not a good knife to Here. cut. Here, I didn't cut any onions yet with this. That's fine. Oh, thank you. You you are a gentleman. You're gonna have to give it back to me, but oh, this is so much better. You're overflowing. Oh, You're overflowing. Oh, calm down. Calm down. Where's that? What's the what's the old trick? The wooden uh, spoon on top it's or something? To total BS. Doesn't work for me. It's fine. <laughs> calm down. Everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. I'm going to doctor panicking. up some barbecue sauce, okay? Sweet. I'm going to doctor it up. Mike, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Look what I'm putting in there. You're missing it. Oh, maple syrup. That's right. That's right. I'm going to doctor up. While you do that, I was going to make a homemade barbecue sauce, but to be quite frank, Spurtle was over this weekend, and her and Joe threw it down in my refrigerator of condiments and threw 90% of it my stuff It expired in 2019, so we threw it out. And that, did, that applies to about 30 different bottles that were in there. We had more so, condiments than anything else in this house. We did have a lot, and it's probably my fault. But it is, really. Yeah. And having said that, I had a bottle of barbecue sauce I want to use. This is just the Stubbs Sticky Sweet Legendary Barbecue Sauce. I always like to doctor up my barbecue sauce. It makes me feel better about myself. Um, I just put barbecue sauce in a saucepan. You don't have to. Don't listen to me, okay? If you don't want to, you don't have to. Barbecue sauce in there like so. You're gonna put in a little yellow mustard. Just make it better, okay? I'm not I'm not measuring nothing. I'm not measuring not one thing. If you want to measure, you can be that you can do that. I like a little maple syrup for extra sticky sweetness and it really caramelizes on that chicken. It gives you a such good tang, a such good stickiness. And then for tang, a little apple cider vinegar. Come on! Laura, um, while you're opening, um, I, somebody said, uh, I think Judy P said, I wish Mike would explain what he's putting into his drink. I did earlier, but I'll get, uh, you, now you have it live. So I put Yeah, in a lot here. of people tune in, you know. Yeah, a little later. Through, so I'm, I'm really sorry. I should have been more descriptive. Um, we got the Wagon House Winery peach, peach wine. You can also use Jam Jar, which is a more national brand or international brand because it's from South Africa. It's a sweet, it's a sweet wine. Sorry. So any sweet Moscato w will work. Um, but this is the one I use because it's local and it's fresh and, and I, I love supporting local. Just um, taste that. It's not even heated yet. Just put your finger in there. Just put your finger in there. Uh, I'm going I'm to heat it up. Don't worry. Oh, oh okay. I'm going to put bring it to boiling point. Oh, amazing. Okay, so anyway, back to what I was doing here. Um, peach schnapps, uh, two shots of peach schnapps, uh, top it with wine, and then I did blended um, uh, cr blended peaches uh, that were frozen. So you get a little, you get a little thing with, with some um, oranges mixed in, so it's a little bit like slurry. And then what I did is I put it over ice, 
and then I shake it up. So Joe, you might want to mute me for a second because I'm shaking. I can't mute. Well, I can. Okay, so I can mute both of them at the same time today. Unfortunately, if I mute one, it mutes both. But then you still have me back here, and we can watch them dance. That's always fun. They keep, yeah. Here we go. We'll bring them back. Pop this off if I can get it off because sometimes it's a little bit hectic. Oh. Um, so look at the top here. So you garnish. Okay, Joe, can you get a can you get a shot of the uh, garnish here? All right, so we we're the watching the done. garnish. Let me see if we can get the lighting here. It is very bright behind that cup. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. All right, well, so you, wait. Well, there we go. So Joe, you're gonna do you're gonna do a quick garnish with the lemon and the lime, right, in the glass, and then you're gonna do a little bit of ice, right? A little bit, little bit, a little bit of ice just to keep it, you know, cold. Hey. Not too much. Hey. All right. And then you're gonna Bring do this. Seconds. See this little topping right here? So I'm gonna put this on my thing here, right? I'm gonna pour the pour this on top. Yes, queen. See that? Thank you. See that right there? Ah! I'm, I'm doing. There we go. Then we go. you put the your, your little peach on top and let it sit. No, no, I'm no, I'm not in a cherry for. Uh, no, I'm not a cherry for Laura. But no. here we go. So look, see that right there? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, and that fly jumped in just to say hello to us. Did you Where? catch that? It just flew away. It jumped oh, right in and it flew out okay, of there. Okay, there we go. So this is oh, for Laura. I got a little peach on top. But yeah, that's for Laura. So Laura, oh, thank you. Enjoy. It's about to get lit. Okay. <laughs> Hot veins. About, only Hot one, veins. Oh, let me tell you what happened about getting lit. <laughs> okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you about Sunday. Okay. The funny thing is, you don't really. Uh, oh. Is it good? Ah. Oh! We found something she feel... likes, folks. We found something she likes. This is dangerous. <laughs> this makes me feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? So let me tell you about what happened on Friday, Sunday. It wasn't wild boy. So we were tomato canning all weekend. Okay. Spurtle was here all weekend. She's watching. Okay. I, don't, I already know she's laughing. Okay. And so what had happened was I like to make a picture of wine soaked peaches you know you drink the wine all day you eat the peaches at the end well i made a big one so we had some leftovers and so i just decided why not let's finish it it was like 11 a.m what i did not know was that it turns into practically moonshine maybe it doesn't but it was very strong that was a morning. weird phone call i got from you that was a weird one uh-huh where are you? And I was like, I'm going to get some breakfast. And you're like, you know, you're not, you're coming to my house. And I was like, oh, okay. So well, what had happened was, <laughs> I ate like a pound of these peaches that were soaked in wine that was so strong. But I drank the wine in the pitcher. And next thing I knew, and by the way, it was 94 degrees out. So it was hot. We were in the sun. Next thing I knew, we ain't talking hot veins, okay? We were so past the point of hot veins. Like if this was a highway, Hot Veins is a side road, and where I was was on the New Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> okay, I was, I was, I was gone. I was in a, in a different zip code. Okay, next thing I know, I'm thinking, what? Wow, something. I really feel hot. I really feel exhausted. Like I don't know what's wrong with me. Let me tell you something. Okay, you were working on the heat. It's, it's what happens. You were taking a break. It's fine. Do not. No drink. one's judging. Peaches soaked wine after they've been soaking for 24 hours on an empty stomach in 94 degree weather. Unless you want to feel, actually I feel real good. So I can't even say that. Unless you feel okay not knowing what your actions are going to be. Okay. I knew I wasn't going to call a random stranger. I called this one. Look at this. Okay. I knew I wasn't going to act a fool with people that I don't know. I knew I had my best friend over. That's right. She recorded the whole thing, of course. Wawa Waters were my savior that morning. Because if it wasn't for that, I would have really been in a lot of trouble. Um, all that to say, Hot Veins was Hot I kind of feel like every episode of Tasty Thursday is just a story about Laura drinking too much the week before now. But here's the funny thing is. She doesn't really drink much. I don't drink much. That's the point. That's the thing, yeah. If I doesn't... drink one and a half of these, I'll be in the next zip code, okay? I'll be in that pool fully closed. I will be on the turnpike, okay? I will be... <laughs> twerking on the turn, but I mean, I, I'm a goner okay. because I'm such a lightweight. That's I'm going to try to reel it back in here. What are we mm. making today? What do we got going on? So, speaking of, we got some chicken thighs. Where did those come on. from? They just fell out of the sky? They weren't here a minute ago. My sister brought them out. Oh. So what I have in here are some boneless, chi skinless chicken thighs. I, my back. I don't mind a little fat on my chicken thighs. It's what makes them so delicious. Let's be frank here, okay? Let me be frank. How is this, guys? 
I'll be Joe. How's that? Not fair. Wow. Oh, my God. Good, right? Guys, really good. it's very um, good. That is a very good drink right there. Earth to, Earth, to, Earth to everybody. Like, try this drink, like, now. Yeah, you really should. If you don't, you're really missing out. So I got some of this seasoning. I love the Kinder's, the blend. It's just salt, pepper, garlic. That's all it is. Is you that Kinder, like a Kinder egg? It's called Kinder's. Yeah, salt, so pepper, garlic, the blend. Chicken. Oh, they're good. They're, they're Costco, too. I got it at Costco. You know, you can make your own. I usually do make my own blends, but I like that one. It doesn't have a bunch of stuff in it that I don't like. And then I'm going to take some orange, and I'm just going just gonna to squeeze it all over. I'm going to give it a little bit of love in, you know? That little bit of citrus will slightly tenderize, but, you know, it just looks nice, you know? We have a super chat. Thank you, Brenda. She says, hi, Joe, Laura, Mike. Welcome back, Mike. Nice uh, to see you. Mike, you are, queen. you are very welcomed back by everyone here. Uh, you know, I... Brenda I, is a queen. Just so I got we emotional. I got some DMs for you guys last week um, that were like, we missed you. You know, Laura spoke so highly of you and, and, and Spurtle. Like, they really like they really said a lot of nice things about you. I watched and Wait, I... Did that surprise you? Because that's no, offensive. I mean, I mean, I mean it, it didn't. I, I just was really, like... I was very touched to my heart, right? It went, went deep touched down. Touched by an angel. That's Boy, right. starting to kick in. So, you know, I was very happy to, uh, to, to see everybody. It kind of brought me home a little bit, you know, hearing the, the live and being there from afar. So thank you all for the DMs and stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, my Instagram is blowing up with it, and, and I responded to every one of you. If I missed you, I'm sorry, but I respond to everybody as far as I know. So thank you. Can you do that for me? Because right, I get Laura. like 3,200 DMs a day, and I try, but my goodness. So you're using I, a special orange here? I'm just using a Cara Cara orange. I'm just using a little citrus. You know, just a little seasoning. If you don't have this blend, it's quite literally salt, pepper, garlic powder. That's all it is. And a little citrus in there, olive oil. You know, just let it, let it marinate in there. You know, let it do beautiful <laughs> things. You let it marinate, you know? I'm just going to let it. that sit here for a bit. I'm just going to let it sit. Soak up all those flavors. What in the world was that? It's a little fuzz. Is that a little fuzz? Did you see it? I don't know what it's called. I'm gonna just set this aside because while that marinates, I'm gonna get some of your questions for just a second. Do you need me to get some for you? Oh, I'm going to in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can get some from Instagram that you have if you mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I got you. You um, do that while I chop a little onion because for my slaw, you know, for my slaw, I want some onion. Are you considering going back to dark and brown hair for the autumn winter? No. Why not? I'm considering going a little bit warmer, richer, you know, like rich mom vibes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going back to black hair. I hate to break it to everyone. I know that comes as a shock and people get all mad. But listen, I can't, I can't be doing black hair because this is what happens, okay? At this age, which I'm pushing 37, it washes me out. It does. I know not everybody wants to hear it. I know, I know. But it just washes me out, and I'm just not a great fan. All right, I mean, you look—you look beautiful with dark hair, honestly. Thank um, you. But you also look beautiful with light hair, so it's Thank very you. versatile. I, I you like the job. black hair. I'm not against the other colors, but hey, listen. Listen. I see it all the time. People are like, "Why would you? Why would she do that? Why would she change?" Because I'm pushing 37, it. and it was so harsh against my skin. You don't look a day over 21. Look, I, I had 40. I hit 40, and I'm still I'm still pumping like a champ over here, you know? Pumping like a champ. I don't know what this means. <laughs> pumping like I, a champ. I don't know either. Fist pumping. I don't know. But I'm just, I just, you know. I was playing the air trombone earlier with the with the pizza maker, so, you know, we're doing good today. Um, I'm just going to very thinly, very thinly slice of red onion. Okay, so somebody said, I, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of peaches. What else can you substitute with the drink? Um, I would say you can do you can even do a watermelon. So you can I was do the gonna say cantaloupe or honeydew. Honeydew would be really good. I, literally any fruit, just freeze it up and put it in there. Use a um, use just a regular moscato, not a peach sangria or peach wine. Use just a regular moscato, and then um, you know you're fine. That just go that route. Um, it, for non-alcoholic, you can use iced tea and and put the peach the, the frozen peaches in there, and you're good to go that way. So. Um, yeah, there's a lot. This is very versatile, very easy. Um, you know, I mean, if I can make it, anybody can make it. You all can make it easy. Trust me. You probably make it better than me. I'm going to hit this with a little olive oil. Because remember, this is a tangy slaw. It is not a mayo-based slaw. Salt. A pinch of sugar, sugar. How'd you get so flat? You know, you know. Circa 2004. <laughs> maybe a little earlier. You well, know. That was. I didn't know that feels like it was yesterday. It does. It really does. The older I get, the more I feel like it was just, everything was just happening. I know. Yesterday. A little 
a little acid, some red wine vin. No, apple cider vin. I'm just gonna hit it with a little Dijon. No, okay. whole grain mustard. You would think I haven't cooked before in my life. I promise you I have. Some pep. That already smells good. That literally already smells good. Before I do anything else though, hang on, hang tight. I gotta season my boiling water for my mm. taters. Cause I haven't seasoned that one yet. And I gotta check my taters. Anybody need a refill while I'm here? Refills already, okay. That means it's good. Laura, you need a refill? Nope, not yet. And a toothpick, got it. Not yet. Oh, I almost used the wrong tongs for my slaw. Okay, that just makes it around real good. Makes it really good. Makes uh, it real good. Katie says, Laura, have you started canning your tomatoes yet? I suggest go Maybe back. Maybe done that. Yeah, go back through Instagram. You'll see the canning tomatoes uh, reel from Laura. Yeah. She did a great job with that. August yep. slipped away like a bottle of wine, Dora Rodriguez said. Yes, it did slip away like a bottle of wine. It really did. I'll tell you. This summer went really fast. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of good days this summer. Mm, Let me mm, tell you. Mm. That's a nice time you slow right there. Um, another question from Instagram. Will you ever make sushi? No. I don't. I don't I'm going to tell it. you why. I'll leave it to the professionals. And also, I got food poisoning from sushi like 15 years ago. So, I don't do sushi with fish. And therefore, people would get mad at me because it definitely would not be authentic. And here's the thing. Leave it to the professionals. I am not a sushi professional. At all. So, I don't bother. You know? Okay. Mike, you get some more comments. I'm going to drain my taters, okay? Okay, you got it. You got it. Keep the comments coming in, guys. I love them. Um, hopefully, you all are joining us, enjoying the step-by-step uh, -step here and everything's going good. So, um, let's see. Woo! I, you know, guys, I, I got to ask you all. Um, uh, Joe, what, what camera are you on? Um, Lars? I'm here right now. So okay. So, guys, a question for you all. Yellow. Um, what dessert would you make with this? I, I want to know, like, I want Peach some cobbler. suggestions. I, well, I mean, I know what you make, obviously. But I want to know what everybody else in the audience would make. I saw Tres Leches in the uh, chat earlier. But I want to know what dessert would tickle your fancy with this meal. Because I like getting creative. Ooh, that's so, insane. shoot it in the chat. Shoot it in the chat. I want to see. Your favorite dessert that would go along with a beautiful chicken meal. Dun, dun, for the summer. Dun, 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 Get in the sangria. I just topped you off. It's better. I know. Mm. Gets better mm. with age, like me. Mm. Ah. Mm. Oh, so good. Mm. God, I'm just really proud of myself tonight. Mm. I'm sorry. I end high five. Mm. Oh, oh. You know that on. just brings me back to a time and place, right? Mm. Brings me back. Mad River. <laughs> Mike, can you answer two questions? I gotta go inside and grab one thing. Sure. So, um, let's see. We will go with. Uh, mm, Okay, so what? some of the comments actually I'm liking right now. Uh, Joe, if you, are you on me or should I go in the middle? I'm on you. I okay, was up beautiful. there just changing. It was really, really getting yellow. The sun is super yellow tonight because it's this time of year and it's, the sky is just you know, the way it is. And so sometimes mm. I got to adjust. It's too, too much yellow for me. But you know what? Hey, it's all good. No more than you. Yep. Uh -oh. Flan. In the uh, somebody said talking. flan, apple pie, with whipped cream. I love flan. I love me some flan. I, I had a... I grew up with a lot of, well, very Italian slash Puerto Rican uh, town, right? So we had a lot of, some of my best friends were Puerto Rican growing up, right? Um, and Joe, too, obviously. We grew up in the same town, so it was very, very Spanish. Hold on, I gotta tell Laura to shut her mic off because she's far away talking, having a conversation. Oh, so oh, can you just. You can't mute her by herself. Oh, okay. Why am I so um, all of a sudden? So I will uh, go on. Um, so anyway, flan is very near and dear to my heart, and so is stress leches. Um, very good as well. So. Uh, peach cake from from Danielle Cataldi. Judy P says tiramisu. Judy P, I'm with you on the tiramisu. I love a good tiramisu. Very creamy. I like a little bit on the colder side than just coming out of you know off the th side. Although I saw somebody preparing tiramisu table side, pouring the coffee over the lady fingers and scooping it out. Looks cool, but I prefer a little cold in my opinion. And Laura's tiramisu recipe is beyond worlds. Amazing. She uses some kind of like chai tea in hers. It's like unreal. Um. So, pie, I'm seeing a lot of pies. I'm seeing a lot of like fruit-based stuff, like apple crisp, um, angel hair cake with fresh fruit whipped cream, all summer stuff, and I love that. See, I'm a, I'm a big summer guy. So um, when I was a kid, my mom would make these um, over the summer, whenever we had a summer party. She'd do like a, um, a, a, a crushed up pretzels on the bottom, and then do a um, strawberry jello with real strawberries in it, fresh strawberries. And then she'd do a, um, uh, like a, a Cool Whip on top. 
and, and sometimes put blueberries on top. So it'd be like red, white, and blue. And it was unreal. So if you ever like look up a recipe for that, I don't know if Laura ever made that before. It's jello pretzel salad. There we go, jello pretzel salad. See, I just, you know, I gotta tell you. Mm. Um, I have a question for the parents out there of little ones. What is up with our, like Mia right now is watching children unbox toys. Why is that still a th on YouTube? Why is that still a thing? I don't like know. why? I had a weird dream last is it night like, that is Ryan it like, from Ryan Toys Reviews wait, was, was over. Is it? Is this like their version <laughs> of when this is we so watch much. makeup hauls? It is. Oh boy! I just put that together. That's like how we would watch makeup hauls. Oh. Hmm. Wow. Now I get it. Thanks. Everybody's saying uh, that recipe is so good, Brenda. Uh, you know, I'll tell you. Um, somebody asked me, Mike, how do you get through hard times? I've been through a lot of hard times, especially over the past two years. And I'll tell you, having Me. great friends, great friends, like like a Laura that'll just FaceTime you randomly throughout the day and say, hey, Mike, how you doing? You good today? Or send me a gift that says, is you okay? <laughs> um, That's my favorite. Having a, a, good, a good circle to surround yourself with gets you through hard times, or well, me anyway. And then another thing that really gets me through hard times is thinking about where you want to be in the end game. Yeah. What's your island? Where do you want to be? What's your utopia look like? Mm -hmm. And then working towards that in little steps every day. Mm -hmm. And then celebrate those little steps when you get them. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, a little step for me would be today I want to see my goddaughter. I love her. You know, Mia, right? So I call up Laura and say, yo, what you doing for dinner, boo? She'd be like, nothing without you here. So I'd be like, all right, I'm coming over. She'd be like, all right, you better come over. And I'm like, all right, I'm coming. Don't worry. Then she'd be like, you better come here. But first, get me dunking on the way. I'm like, okay, I'll, get you. I'll, I'll shoot myself down you to that level. You went to Primo's without me this week. I don't, I don't think, think I forgot. I did. You do not think I forgot. I know. So I was like... So I was like, yeah, you know, so little victories like that, little things make, make me happy. Also getting outside and walking, get in nature and walk my five miles a day or three, you know, between three and five miles. I can't say every day I do five, but I try my best and doing that. And I post little like things on my Instagram with music that I'm listening to while I'm walking um, that keeps me going. And then I get comments back from you guys in my DMs that are like, you're doing good and it makes me feel good. So like just putting positivity in the world, that makes me get through hard times. So that all that stuff combined really helps. What about you, Laura? What gets you through hard times? I bury myself into to things that bring me joy and that, like, for me, you know, when I go through a hard time, obviously I turn to cooking because it's what, like, grounds me. It's also my comfort zone. Um, it's also how I feed others that are having a hard time. And I quite literally mean, like, feed their soul, like, to make you feel better. I know that if I call you, and I'll mm -hmm. make you your, like your favorite dinner. That's gonna cheer you up a little bit. It might um, not. It might not make you feel better about boom. your whole life, but you cheer this guy up a lot. I appreciate it. You but did. for me personally, I also try to surround myself with people that are gonna uplift me. That's really important. I think I learned that this year more than ever, especially over the last couple of years, I should say, when I was really battling some heavy anxiety that I had never dealt with before. Um, COVID was tough. Mm -hmm. That was a tough time for us. Mm hmm That was a really tough time for me. And so all that kind of really helps. But, you know, I like what you said about thinking about the future. Like, put yourself at the end game, right? Put your, like, everything in life is hard, right? Whether it's how you want to succeed in life in general, at, at work, say you have some physical goals you want to hit. When you're having those rough times, thinking about your end goal and where you want to be can be really motivating. And it can be a plateau breaker. And like I said, whether it's for life, work, physical goals, whatever it might be, sometimes thinking ahead is the exact thing that you need to like snap yourself out of it. Do you know what I mean? I so. think people that, people, you know, like, I, and I'm, I'm a very social person. I'm what we call a yellow at work. Mm. And I think you're, you're a very big yellow too. You and I are like that way. Mm -hmm. um, we feed off of other energy too. Mm -hmm. So like oh, yeah. energy from people, positivity from people. We get that energy back and we send it back. Oh, yeah. I actually just came across something that said, do you read someone's energy and do you project that energy? And basically what it meant was, like, if you, if you and I are in a room together and your energy is very aggressive and it's belittling and it's just, it's too strong for me and it's, again, in an aggressive way, I will meet that energy. I will, in turn... Like, in turn, I will quite literally, like, soak up that aggression. I will soak up that anger. And I will, in turn, like, deliver that. 
So I don't like that, but that's just what happens. It, it happens when you, you don't even realize it. So when you surround yourself with people that are joyful and happy and they're thankful for their life and they're grateful for who they, how they live their life and their life in general, then you match that energy, right? So if Mike's around, I am jolly and I'm joyful and I'm silly. If Spurl's She's jolly around, and has hot veins. I have hot veins. If huh? Spurtle's around, I'm joyful and jolly and exciting because that's the she's that's her energy, so I match that energy. And I try really hard not to surround myself whose energy does not align with mine because what is the point? I'm not going to surround myself with people that make me feel like I'm walking on eggshells. Um, so anyway, way off on a tangent, but you meet, you match someone's energy. So if you're finding yourself particularly upset or stressed out by being around certain people, that's because you're matching that same energy. I agree. Uh, Krista Gomez uh, sent over a super chat, and she said, uh, music gets me through those times. Heavy metal. <laughs> oh, yeah. I agree with you. Music gets me through tough times, too. I'm more of an EDM type guy uh, just because I like, like, you know, it's peppy. It keeps me going. It makes, pumps me up. But I'll Put a chicken on the grill, Jojo, if you want to, if you want to catch me. Catch me Catch outside. Catch me outside. How about that? Laura okay. heard my EDM the other day, and she told me it was demonic. How about <laughs> I that? don't like his music. <laughs> what music gets you through tough times, everybody? Let's let's hear in the chat. Are you guys EDM guys, country guys, or gals? Laura's um, country, big time country. Uh, I'm not a country person personally. Uh, but absolutely not. Doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean I won't appreciate it. It just means uh, who do you, who do you, who do the blowfish is better? Is who do the blowfish not Darius Rucker by himself? Man, Mike, you're, you're fighting words. Here. No, yeah. I'm not a country person. Like I don't. It's not to say that it's not good. It's just not my vibe. MK says you're a product of your environment, and I agree. Yeah, for I, sure. I surrounded myself, especially you in college. You become the company you keep. Yep. You know? I surrounded myself in college with, with, with uh, Mr. Vitali over here. And, uh, you know, we were, we were romping around uh, Philly a lot, you know, and... Hey, listen, if you lived in Philly between, like, 2002, 2004, and you heard a La Cucaracha horn, that was me and my mm. 1991 Buick LeSabre, okay? Yep. Oh, bachata. Danielle Cataldi says bachata. Salsa and reggaeton. Ah, I agree with you ah, on that. Antonio ah, Banderas. I swear to God. I swear. I'm about to be a fight. I swear. I'm, I'm coming out refilled. I'm just going to keep refilling. So just, yeah. uh, you know. So I'm going to recap what's in my salad here. I'm just making, cutting up the fixings for my tater salad. I just got some celery, onion. I have, there's a recipe on my website. I'm just sort of winging it, but it's basically the same thing. Um... I've got some pickles. You could do dill relish if you want to. I just wanted to use up some of these pickles because I was made fun of for all the pickle jars in my fridge. Okay. It wasn't just that. <laughs> okay. First of all, I want everybody to take a moment after this and go to their fridge and notice that the word pickle doesn't appear on any of their mainstream pickle jars. I don't get it. Oh, judges look at The word up, pickle. No, it's, I, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Clawson, uh, Mount Olive. None of them say the word pickle on the jar. There's some kind of weird thing going on. I don't know if it's a Mandela thing or what. But only like the small brands have the word pickles. Somebody mm -hmm. figure this out for me. Probably because there's some technicality and they're not actually pickles. Um, I think music, 80s, 80s music is, is up there. Is, is the highest on the list here. And I agree with you. Good, A good 80s song like, don't you oh, want me, baby. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, we're living on a prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take my hand, we'll make it, I swear. Bon Jovi, you want, you want, oh, we're oh. living on a prayer. Yeah. Oh God! I'm sorry, okay, everybody. I'm sorry for making just you went, Everybody just tuned out. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, folks. Half of America just and, and the rest of the world. <laughs> YouTube. You love it, don't lie. Okay, wait. Let's get back to my salad real quick. Back to my potato salad. All okay. right, let's get the potato salad. I, I got it get, on here. I just want to get the potato salad going. You know the potato salad. Tell me what you're doing. I okay. see a nice bottle of uh, sunscreen on the bottom of the shelf there too. It's real nice. Real nice. A nice fair bit of mayonnaise. Okay, this is a classic American potato salad, but it is good, okay? It is good. Don't come for me. It is good, okay? A little mustard. I'm using whole grain because I like it. A little sour cream. Yes, I said sour cream. Don't knock it till you try. It is delicious, and you're going to love it. It is. You made that with sour cream before when I had it? It's delicious. Unreal. Unreal. It, like, makes it a little tangier. It cuts the richness. It's just good. It's just good, you know? I'm going to do a little apple cider vinegar because you need a little tang. And then... Some of this seasoning. Okay, you see those bowling basket pickles there? They say, wait, those ones don't even say pickles on them. Pickles. See, Where? It's, it's, it says kosher baby dills. What about does this? Does it say the word pickle anywhere? This no. one does not either. No, they never say it. Never. Okay, now I'm feeling really duped here. How's it going, guys, with the drinks? Are they good? Still good Phenomenal. Really okay. phenomenal. 
Good, I'm glad. I also had it added, not had it, added hard boiled eggs, okay? And here's a trick. You wanna add your potatoes to your potato salad when your potatoes are still slightly warm. I drained them, I put them back in the pot, but obviously it's not hot anymore. Why slightly warm? Because it absorbs the flavor better, mm. way better. I'm thinking, hey guys, if the comments you're probably gonna be leaving in a couple seconds, so I just figured I'd get mm. ahead of that. Mm. And then here's what you do. Do not knock it. I take my spoon and I literally break up those potatoes and mash them up a little bit. And oh my goodness, it is so good. Laura, Just like Joe's. Danny Dolls asked a question, and I think this is a good one. Um, where do you get your inspiration for cooking, for your cooking? Where do you, oh. where do you get your inspire, inspiration from? Everywhere. So, obviously the seasons are a big, like, a lot of inspiration. Um, everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. A lot of times it's literally like an ingredient that will spark something. Um... A lot of times I'll use Pinterest to see like the kind of thing that people are enjoying the most, whether it's like a soup or something like that. Same thing with TikTok. I'll see what's resonating most, but I only go for recipes that are in line with me and how I like to eat and cook. So you won't be seeing Pokemon cakes and all kinds of weird stuff like that because that's just not how I like to eat. So that's pretty much it. But I do find, I do find, um, inspiration everywhere like the sandwich reminds me of the barbecue sandwich we had in Hershey remember it was oh, on brioche how good was that yeah the only difference was theirs was like cornflake crusted barbecue sandwich it was good and I just don't have the time and equipment to do that right now because I'm outside obviously um everybody send some love to Lynn Fleming oh. she's in there with dialysis um oh. be tough Lynn we're sending some love to you good luck with the dialysis sending you love Lynn um oh that's fun Linda Kay said, I actually, I actually made mashed potato salad once by accident because I cooked, I cooked potatoes and too long. And it's the best. Guaranteed it, it was the best. It is good. I guarantee um, Fran N said, check my jar. It does not say pickles. It does not. No, nope. see? Now now everybody's going to figure it out. Um, oh, thank you. This is, this is look exactly like the one we have. Okay. It's I'm like saying. Joe's. It's just like Joe's. I'm telling you. Was it's the, just like Was Joe's. the sandwich you're oh talking God. about in Hershey, was that at that, that distillery? That we went to? Yeah. Hidden still? Yeah. Hidden I'm going to flip the chicken, still. and you notice that it's barbecue chicken, but there's no barbecue sauce on it. Barbecue sauce, high in sugar, which means it will burn and your chicken will be raw. If I were to put the barbecue sauce when the chicken first goes on the grill, the barbecue sauce will burn the outside before the inside has a chance to cook. So what you do is you cook your chicken about three quarters of the way. When you flip it on that second side, right? When you flip it, that's when you can start basting it with that barbecue sauce. So what I do is, at this point, you can also do this in the oven. Like say you don't want to have to, I like to put them all together. Is that weird? I don't know, I feel like um, they like catch each other's drippings. I don't know. Laura, yes. Krista Gomez says she has a fall bridal shower mm. and she's trying to plan for her Me sister. too, me too. What would you, like what, what's, your, what's your top two favorite things to eat at a bridal shower? What would you say? Because I don't, I, we don't need to go into full menu, but what would be your top two? I'm assuming it's a brunch. It didn't say, but that's... Um, you really can't go wrong in the fall with like a really beautiful station of different kinds of sandwiches that are cut, cut small and doing a couple different soups. And that's what I would do. You know what I would do? Pigs okay. in a blanket and ho-hos. <laughs> <laughs> you would. All right, I'm basting my chicken. I'm taking that barbecue sauce and I'm just basting the top of that chicken and then I'm going to close it up and let it cook on the opposite side then I'll flip it and I'll baste the underside and I'm going to continue to do that a couple times until that barbecue sauce just really adheres to the chicken and just becomes delicious. You can absolutely do this with bone and skin on chicken thighs, chicken breast or chicken drumsticks or whatever. Just again, make sure that they're cooked three quarters of the way through before you start basting it. Because especially when they're bone in, they take a long time to cook all the way through and you don't <laughs> want to risk raw chicken for anything really. Krista Gomez has to be dying over here. Why? She's, she says, I'm not above pigs in a blanket. <laughs> I love pigs in a blanket. Me too, you I know love that. You know, you know we love a good hot dog party. I Come love on. a wiener. Yeah, me too, me too. I love a wiener. You know? A nice hot and, dog, stop laughing. Nice and thick, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like a, I, I like the little ones. 
Oh, the little tiny okay. one. The little uh, tiny one. I can't one? mute her mic, folks. I can't mute her her mic. <laughs> I'm talking about the hot dogs. Dippable. You dip them in the ketchup. They're... You dip them in the ketchup. Sorry, Chicago. I just offended all of Chicago. You dip them in mustard. A little mustard. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so uh, 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 Lil, uh, Lily's Derby life, or Derbyshire life, sorry, has a pasta question. Hmm. How do you measure how much pasta for a person and sauce, please? How do I work the ratios? Does it end up too much sauce or too much pasta? Please. Rule of thumb, 28 ounce can of sauce goes with one pound of pasta. Rule of thumb. Now, how many people that one pound of pasta feeds? That is up to you. Because you go to some people's houses, and I mean no disrespect, but I go into some American people's houses where they're all skinny and they're eating whoa, two whoa, ounces of pasta piece, Americans? And I'm like, listen, there is not an iota of Italian blood through your veins. Because you just put a pound of pasta for 16 people, and that's just not gonna cut it. It's good if you put cottage cheese on top, then you're good to go. I will die. I will die a slow death. Um, so the rule of thumb is, in my household, in my household, the rule of thumb is one pound of pasta to one 28 ounce can of tomato sauce, if you don't have any meat. Yep. If you have protein, you can stretch that one pound to feed six people, because then it's really bulky and heavy. So if you're adding a pound of meat, to your 28 ounce can of sauce, whether that's chicken and Alfredo, ground beef and tomato. That was good, right? You yep. can feed six people. If Joe, it's just marinara sauce and penne, one pound to time, a 28 ounce Time stamp on this, oh, time stamp on this. On what, on the, uh, on what you just said. Oh, what was the time code? We are yeah. at, um, you know what? Does it even tell me how long we've been live? Whatever that time code is, just that's what we go back to refer for Laura's pasta dish. That, that makes was, sense. That was great. Does that, that make a, sense bro. everybody? Little bro. Nice job. So again, to Nailed reiterate, it. one pound to 28 ounce can of sauce. 54 minutes. For four people if it's plain marinara. One pound to 28 ounce can of sauce plus one pound of protein, feed six. And how long you cook the chicken for, by the way? Everybody's asking. Just a question. There. It all depends on the size, but roughly about five minutes per side. Maybe a little bit longer because I have the barbecue sauce and I want to really caramelize it. But I am using chicken thighs, which means you can't overcook them. Um, so I'm not all that worried. Maddie Tom said is a, is a member for 14 months, and he said that um, this is the perfect meal for the last Tasty Thursday summer meal. Excited about your fall and winter uh, Tasty Thursday choices. Would love to cook along for the fall and winter this year. Yes, yes. I listen. I got feedback on both sides. I got feedback that said I want to cook along, and then a lot of people were like, No, no. I want to have my wine, and I want to watch you and your shenanigans. I don't feel like cooking along. So if you remember, at first for Tasty Thursdays, I was putting out a menu. I was telling you guys days in advance what I was cooking, but a lot of people were like, no need. So then I stopped hearing from the people that wanted to cook along. Mm. So now I'm just gonna do it. And if you wanna cook along, you can, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. I think talking but, about it beforehand on, on your Instagram stories is probably the best bet, right? But also, there's gonna be times where I do things that are exclusive to Tasty Thursdays, and for that, you're just gonna have to roll with it because you just never know. But for the first, this weather is spectacular. It's amazing right now. It's really spectacular. There are gonna be times, like I said, where there's gonna be a recipe that's like exclusive to Tasty Thursday. So with that, I can't really help you. What but, you can't really tell on camera is how dark it is out here. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's actually pretty dark um, right now. So I got another question, Laura, and I'm sorry to keep feeding you questions. I feel mm. like I'm talking too much this time. I'm really sorry. But Feed them in. I'm, get, I'm just injecting from the audience here because I feel y'all. I'm mm. with y'all this time. I, I mean, I'm always with y'all. I always love y'all, but you know. Okay, so um, I got a lot of questions about the vlog, your old vlogs, right? Yeah, I'm not doing that again. I know, I know it was a tough time. I mean, I used to vlog too, um, and I stopped, but like, because it's a lot of work. It's a no, lot of work. it wasn't that. It was that we were getting it to a point, and we're going to be having a real hard truth here, okay? We were very successful at it, and people really loved it. And I would have people that worked for Google, people that worked for big companies that were like, oh my gosh, I love to watch you guys because I think you're so funny. It's like watching newlyweds, but like a smart, funny version of it, which was great, which was sort of the intention, right? Unfortunately, what comes with that is a slew of Reeps. very angry monkeys, very angry coyotes, very angry squirrels, like that just want to attack for no reason. When you don't, when you start not feeling safe where you live, and you start not to not feel safe. And this was around the time that we were planning on having a baby. We wanted to really start a family. We were really working hard on trying to conceive and have a family. And I just felt like I'm at the point in my life where I don't want anybody else's input or opinion on my life whatsoever. And I just didn't feel comfortable having people have an insight of my life when it came to my child. 
Now, I know there are many vloggers out there with their children are their main priority, and they're very, very successful. They're, you know, they probably make a bajillion dollars. They get great sponsorships, which is great for them. That's just not my reality, never has been, never will be, because my daughter's safety is number one, always and forever. So I just felt like I am compromising my morals if I keep going and share the ins and outs of my pregnancy and my baby, and that just was not on the table. Plus, oh, somebody said don't insult the squirrels, by the way. <laughs> Plus, these people were just so angry and they were so insane it was for a tough time. no reason. Was a tough I couldn't time. figure it out. Um, for no reason. So it just kind of took a toll on my mental health, and I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. Same thing and with the Good Vitali for you to recognize that, Laura. You know, I yeah. mean, it's Same tough. thing with Vitaly style. Like, I really loved it. It was like my little corner of the internet where I could be girly and fun, and you guys all loved it as well. And that really got tainted as well. But now I thought to myself recently, I want to bring Vitaly style back because that doesn't include my daughter. It doesn't include my life or my family. It just includes like the fun part of my life and like the hobbies that I'm really into. And Joe gave me a really good point. He was like, you should pick that back up because it's just you having fun. And a lot of your friends watch, which is the funny part is that we text each other about it. And he was like, people are going to hate whether or not they're, you're standing on the sidelines because they're going to say you should have done it, but you don't have the guts. And they're going to hate it if you do it. So they're going to hate either way. You might as well do something that you find fun. So I'm thinking about it. hate you because they ain't you. There you go. Look at my barbecue I mean, chicken. I just, I respect. Oh, let's check out the chicken. I Cam respect three. that. I'm just going to flip it and I'm going to baste the other it's side. It's looking delicious. It's looking rather delicious. But ultimately, it was just my family's sort of life was and, more and you important. Know what? That's yes, it. Yes, that's what it comes down to. What? That's what exactly what it comes down to. Your mental health is more important. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad we addressed that because there's a lot of comments on that and I remember go, you going through that time. Joe, is this, is this, is my camera like facing down or something? I'm look, I'm um, to... um, right now I'm looking at the chicken, but oh. um, here, here we go. There we go. I keep looking at the camera, I'm like, it's like down here. So I'm like, do I, do I look down? Do I? No, I didn't miss, I didn't miss a single second of Uncle Mike. Oh, thank you. I'm just, just checking. Just making sure I'm not like, you're not zooming in all my man parts or something. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that out loud. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. Um. I, I guess because I'm very, you know, I got the belly going on. Uh, anyway, don't talk about my best friend in a negative way. Nah, no, nobody does. They're all, they're all sweet. Everybody's sweet. I'm talking about you. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Um, okay. Okay. Burn my arm, but the other side is caramelizing. We all got in refills over there. Need well, refills. Yes. you know what? Oh, Joe needs a refill. Okay. All right. Mm. Let me look through these comments here. Um, I was a very devoted uh, subscriber to your vlogs, yet completely understand that's Brenda. And you know, it is very hard. And there, there are things we won't say because we don't want to inflame the uh, offenders. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, basically, it's just not normal or, or right to want to show up or be a part of somebody's life that you're watching. It's just mm -hmm. not normal to do it the way yeah. pe some people think it's okay. When I vlogged, um, I, I got to tell you, it's a, it's a very time consuming and it takes up like and not, not only that, but like, you, you know, you're doing it for nothing. You're just doing it to put it out there. And it's just very time consuming. And it's like, by the time yeah, you do I, I it. I didn't mind the time consuming part. That's a very easy thing to edit. You're right, though. It is hard to get and enough I'm a video time, major. Right? I have right. a film and TV production It comes degree. down to, is, is there, people see five minutes of your day and mm -hmm. they immediately assume that that was your entire day. And, then, and right. then that comes with judgment, which then festers into this conspiracy theories about your life, which then makes actual crazy people believe these things about you and then those actual crazy people decide that they want to do harm to you that's yeah. the problem that's where it comes from. i mean i gotta tell you so. i mean i know you guys for what 20 years now maybe even more joe more longer obviously but we're the same people off camera that we are on camera mm -hmm. we're not any different we're just you're hanging out with us you're here we but, I think, it, but I think it's kind of comes down to like these are people in general in general let me just preface it this by saying preface this by saying in general you're gonna find people that are gonna hate on you behind closed doors right, but that's different when there's something festering like, right. like a bunch of crazies get together right, and then one of them goes oh yeah well, i'll fix this right and that's, and that's when it the thing a like problem. you like i get a lot and i don't know why but i get a lot of people that use my pictures on like dating websites right where they catfish other people with it it's really sad and really terrible and the worst part about it is i can't do anything about it i can't contact you know eHarmony, whatever the website is because they're not doing anything wrong, right? Well, they're doing something wrong, but well, not, you can't not do anything about it. The comp yeah, I can't do anything about it. 
And then they get mad at me and people get really angry and they get really vicious. And then I think, well, I have to give people less things to see so there's less yeah, there's things for them to be there's mad about. about yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've witnessed that firsthand over the summer with mm -hmm. what happened. You know, mm -hmm. we had something like that happen. Yeah, um, and yeah, they the contacted police are me. pretty much useless in the situation. There's nothing they can do about but, it. But I mean, they use my picture for many dating sites. It's just what happens. Yeah, you Mike, know? Mike is on. All, there's, I saw your OnlyFans the other day. Is that yours? Or is... Uh, you know, it, I mean, my feet aren't nice. My feet don't look as good as I want them to. You know, I can't do it. Well, we gotta go. I'm it's getting dark chicken. out here. It's getting hard for me to see what's going on here. I'm flipping my chicken. I'm almost chicken. done. What about the lights on the outside, Joe? Uh, I may have to plug them in. Yeah, you may have to do that. Um, I don't. I stole the plug for the. Uh, for my setup over here. I don't know, we're gonna see what happens. That barbecue chicken is falling apart, you guys. What's the pretty blue thing in the center of Lara's apron? It's actually her microphone. Her lights are shining through her apron. <laughs> but it is pretty cool looking. It looks like you have a, it's like a magic necklace. You know what I look like? Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite characters. Yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah. She's activated the Tesseract in her chest. <laughs> You love that Tesseract, let me tell you. you are, you've always loved that Tesseract. Remember Mia? Mike, do you remember Mia in the picture? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I, I photoshopped a picture of the Tesseract in Mia's hand when we were in Italy. It was, it was the best, it was so cute. I gotta find that picture, I'll post it. Okay. Somebody wants to know what type of salt do you use in your water, coarse or fine? To boil, to boil the water. Oh, I always use Morton's coarse coaster salt. Unless otherwise stated. That's always what I use. It melts pretty good, right? It's just an all-purpose good salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, hit me with a few more questions. Okay. Um, actually, we've been really doing well. The, the chat's laying up on its own. Everybody's talking. I love this. You no, know, the um, IG questions I sent you. Oh, those. Okay, let's go to IG. Okay, we'll, we'll go to IG and see what we got. Um, how do you keep yourself so fit cooking all this food? Well, uh, from Carla Pescari. We real friends around here, so we're going to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not in my fittest right now because if there's one time of the year where I will not count my macros, watch what I eat, it's going to be summer. Most people gain the, what's it called? The winter 10. Yeah. Like yeah. they put on 10 pounds in the winter. Or the COVID 80. I do it in the summer. Like, that's my time to shine. It's my favorite food season of the year. It's typically when I go to Italy, which is when I never gain weight. Figure that one out. I didn't, I didn't get any weight. And I eat everything in sight. Me too. Um, I would say, uh, I, I don't necessarily think of myself as a very fit person. I, I also hate to use the word normal or average because that means nothing. Because there is no normal. There is no average. Um... I have been the same size, give or take eight pounds for, I don't know, 10 years, I, you know, um, uh, with the exception of the pregnancy, obviously. I don't know. I, I eat, I do eat really well. I eat really balanced. There are phases of my life where I really want to get into like a cut and up my workouts a little bit. That's starting on Monday. It's starting on Labor Day because I don't wait for the following week. Like, I, if I have a goal in mind, I do it. But I don't know, I, I eat really well. I'm, I, I eat really well. I eat what I want to, I'm just conscious of it. I'm not a snacker. If I'm gonna snack, it's gonna be fruit. It's gonna be maybe yogurt, not always. Whoa. It's gonna be, Sunday what is something out. that I like to snack on? Maybe a protein shake, mm -hmm. but I'm not a snacker because I wanna make my meals count. Yep. That's pretty much it. I don't drink soda. I don't eat packages of cookies. It's just not my thing. It's not my thing because I want a big meal. I want a big dinner. I want a big lunch. So that's where my focus is. I don't love a big breakfast during the week for the most part. So I eat the same thing every day. For but you make a years, hella good egg sammy in the morning. I do make a good egg sandwich. Yep. Um, I eat the same thing for breakfast. Usually it's two pieces of toast and two hard boiled eggs, an English muffin or an egg sandwich, like an egg sandwich. That's usually what I eat. I don't really have any. Well, in the words of Captain Dot Rachel on Instagram, um, you're my favorite bitch in the kish. Ah! Love from Nicaragua. I like that. <laughs> I'm I like my favorite it. bitch in the kish. I like that. I like it. Um, 
Is mm. Joe also Italian? I think we've addressed that one. Yes, he is Italian. Well, and, and half hold, Italian. On. hold on. Y'all are American. You have yeah, Italian, exactly. half yeah, Italian, German. Italian blood through your veins, but you're as American as apple pie. You won't tell his family in Italy that she, their, their family in Italy that he's half German, but you know, hopefully they're not. Oh, look at that not chicken. Don't believe everything you bro, read on the internet. Bro, look, look at the, that chicken. Look mm. at the corners mm. of that chicken. Mm. Listen to the sizzle. You hear the sizzle? I'll, I'll get your mic in there. You know what they say? Don't tell the steaks, tell the sizzle, baby. I hear the sizzle. Yeah. That's some sizzle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Judy P has a good question. What's the best advice your parents ever gave you? Don't. <laughs> don't pee on the electric fence? No. <laughs> that's that's more like where we grew up in the country. No. The best advice is always to be authentically you. And please never forget that whether you're talking to a CEO, whether you become a CEO, a janitor, whatever, you're not above anybody else. You're not. People will make you think like they're above you. Somebody may have a bigger house, a nicer car, a bigger whatever. Th that doesn't mean nothing. That means nothing to me. Yep. Um, if I have somebody more, something bigger than someone else, it means nothing to me. It just means that we are, in, we took, we are two different places in life. And my dad's always been very like fixed on make sure that you treat a janitor and a CEO exactly the same because they are exactly the same. One just may have more zeros in their bank accounts, but at the end of the day, we end up in the same place and we all deserve the same level of respect. You can't buy time, you. you can't buy health. No, time is your most valuable currency. Spend it well. Um, but all that to say, you're not above anybody else. Mm -hmm. You're not. Maybe um, morally you are. Morally, I'm, I think I'm a better person than those squirrels that yell at me and they threaten me behind the, a keyboard. <laughs> you know, morally, but. Hmm. Mike, you're looking you? good tonight. You're looking good. Oh, thanks. Thanks, JoJo. I mean, you always look great. So, Joe lately has been wearing some really beautiful v necks because Joe's a v neck kind of oh, guy. Boy. Here we go. Joe and I are both v neck kind of guys. <laughs> I, but, you know, I, for Tasty Thursdays, I glam I it up for you because promise. I'm so, again, this is peak perfection of humans right here. But, um, Joe has been wearing beautiful v necks lately in pastels, and he looks phenomenal. Like, I, I, stunning. Stunning. So, Jojo, I got to tell you, your choice in V-necks, probably Lars' choice in V-necks, have been have looked very good on you, other than just wearing your normal, typical uh, Steve Jobs black and, and they were gray. So, nice job on Jojo. I only wear three colors, black, gray, blue. Yep. But lately, you've, you've worn some pink, pink. And, it's, and it's been very nice, very cute. Anyway, um, thanks, Jojo. Uh, so, uh, there's let's some, see. There's, let's answer a few more IG questions. Yep. And then we'll... We're getting ready to wrap it up. Um, Laura, what chefs or cooks do you like to follow um, that, that inspire you? And I could, I could probably name a couple that you do, but... Well, let's talk... Um, I mean, you love your Nigella. You love well, your Jamie yeah. Oliver. Yeah. Um, but if we had to talk, like, on IG, like, on creators, like, fellow creators, I love my girl, the modern Nana. She's really great. Primal Gourmet. He's fantastic. Um, skinny taste, of course. What an OG. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else I follow that I love. Uh, I don't really. I'm trying to think of the top of my head, but I really can't think off the top of my head. Is that terrible? I don't know. Can I can I give you my my two favorites? Pepin. Yep, Chef Pepin. Uh, Lydia and, and Lydia Bastianich. Yes, mm -hmm. they're, they're both uh, they're both on. Uh, I haven't really watched like traditional cooking TV in. Probably since I was on TV. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, those that are my drink, two faves. It's hard. It's so good, right? It is so good. Mm. It's hitting hard. It's my favorite. It might be my favorite drink this year. I'm a peach guy, so. Um, yeah. Hercules, can you run on the counter and grab the brioche rolls for me, please? Thank you, my darling. He's a, he's a sweet kid, let me tell you. He Little really Herc is. Little Herc, I call him. Little I Herc. always used to think that Hercules was the name of the dad on Little Mermaid, but turns out I was wrong. No, you're wrong. <laughs> It's Which Triton. one's that? Triton. Triton. Yeah, it's mm. different. I think that's a different Greek god. Is that even Triton's not a Greek god? I don't think. Maybe he is. I don't know. I got to brush my mouth. Hercules. Um, you know what sucks about Tasty Thursdays? What's that? That we got to end play it. Play music. Oh yeah, I love music. I would totally DJ. I'm a better DJ than I'm a drink maker. Let me tell you. I'm really depressed because we play good music. We do. Don't want to get the strikes. Can't so whenever whenever Joe goes and puts off on the end of this video, right? He puts on like the, the, the smooth you. jazz, right? Uncle Mike just puts up the tunes. So oh, when yeah. you see us dancing, we're not dancing to smooth jazz. We're dancing to oh, some no, reggaeton. We're, we're dancing to some 90s hip hop. 
and R and B. We're dancing that whatever whatever I feel like the flavors of the day. But the teardown music the comes tear down on. Music is All right, great. listen, pay attention to the sandwich that I'm gonna build for you, okay? Mm. A nice brioche. Buttery, soft, Ooh, delicious. Let me get this. Brioche, brioche. Okay? I'm your All the man. things. That nice chicken thigh, chicken thigh. Nice piece of mm. chicken. Chicken, chicken. Let's do like one and a half pieces. These of chicken. gnats out here, they really Fat pick pack. up on the camera, I'll tell you. They're very annoying. That tangy slaw. Okay. Mm. Mm. I can taste it through the through the screen. Okay. I'm trying to cover everything up because of the gnats are getting on my nerves. Mm. Mm. Wow, that, that coleslaw looking fine. Uh, your your non-pickle jar is in my way. I can't see. Hold on. Oh, non-pickle jar is in the way. Do you see the word pickle on there anywhere? Because nope. I don't. I don't. Look oh. at that. Mm. Oh. Okay. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Laura, that's looking hot. Looking hot. How dare I not use a serrated knife? Don't judge me. I don't I have one out here. I know what's going on here. It's okay. No one's judging you. Bless me. If anything, we're just saying we wish we could have smell of vision right now. I do. I can actually see it on the screen and smell it from here. It's crazy. You going fours. You going hard on that. It's an appetizer. Mm. Oh! Mm. Oh my god. That is so smart. Bing bong. Bing, oh no, you did no you didn't. I did. Okay, I'm gonna just get in on this. Uh, oh, she's coming around. She's coming right. around. So I'm gonna just get in on this sandwich right now. Okay, I'm, gonna just, I'm gonna go hard on this. Joe, is this on me or no? It's gonna get dirty. Oh, it's on you. I'm watching. It's you. gonna get really dirty, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm not a sloppy eater, but yo, this coleslaw's hits hard. Ooh! Here it goes, ready? Some One, two, three. Bing bong. Bing, mm. bing, bong. Yo. I don't mm. have the hot honey out, but just pretend, okay. uh, pretend it's on there. That not hot honey is so good. Pretend it's on there, okay? This, uh, okay. So you got the coleslaw, crispy, right? You got and the brioche bread, which is nice and soft and good. You can't, you can't even taste the barbecue sauce on it. There's no taste of barbecue sauce on this thing at all, actually. No? Nope. I don't taste There's it. There's a little I just bit in there. A little bit of tanginess, right? Really good, cooked well. The caramelization on the barbecue sauce, you can taste more. No, I don't, I don't need more. I'm, I'm just saying. I just... Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. Oh, my God. It's hot. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um... Yo, it's good. It hits hard. It... it this... This... This slaps. This is slap your mama mm -hmm. type of thing. Here. Mm-hmm. Don't slap your mom, by the way. Your mom's a very nice person. No, I don't know dare. your mom. But don't slap her. Don't slap your mother. Mm-hmm. Mm. If you have a mom in your life and a good relationship, you're lucky. You She's have blessed. hit the wine, the winery. <laughs> you had the lottery. Yeah. All right. So this is like it's sticky, but it's good. So Uncle Mike's gonna eat this like a champ, then wash his hands because you know. Champ, and then wash your hands. Okay. We have the coleslaw, the potato salad. We have the chicken. I'm just trying to keep things covered because these gnats are like. They. Re it's amazing how many you see on camera. Like it looks like there's thousands, but there's only like. Really? Is there a like front of the camera? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> They're just like the light really picks them up. Because we're all close to the camera, that's why. I can't take all the corn out because um, my platter is inside. But trust, okay? Trust and believe that this corn is just... Oh, oh it smells incredible. It does smell really good. It smells incredible. And then we have our drink. Toodaloo. What a beautiful are, are, sight. Are we, are, we, are we done? We're signing off? Mm. Just about. Do we, get, do we get to a couple more questions? I think we got a lot. We... we I literally read off the list here. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So we did it. If you are having last minute gathering for 4th of July. No. Labor Day. For Labor Day. Which, by the way, we thank you for all of your labor that you do to progress society and make it better every day. You be the change you want to see in this world. Mm -hmm. You. You're pointing at me. None. Oh. You make, be the bigger person so that we outshine all the squirrels. So that we outshine all of the mean people because it's the only way we're going to have any kindness in our community in our world whatever is if we outshine the negative so you'll be the change you want to see when you see somebody in the grocery store and she looks beautiful compliment them compliment i got slapped them. for doing that okay? last time but that by the husband he was standing but you right know there. what in a world of in a world of people that need a person like laura to give them a call every day and say are you okay or joe you know to call you every day and mm -hmm. say Hey, I got this crazy neighbor that I'm working with right now. Let me tell um, you who makes my day. Mr. Al. I'm going to tell you about Mr. Al. Mr. Al is, but okay. Mr. Al is this wonderful gentleman at our local shop, right? 
He is there. I don't know if the guy ever has a day off. He's in a produce section. He mm -hmm. gives a banana to every kid that walks through the produce section. Aw, that's okay? sweet. He makes my day. I saw him there this morning, and we were chatting because I was putting the corn in my bag. And not only was he making my day, he comes, all of a sudden a guy comes in, an older gentleman, about the same age as Mr. Al, and he's pushing the cart. He goes, hey, how's your wife? How's she doing? Has she done radiation? Is she? And I'm thinking, that's what I want. Like, that's what I want to see. I want to see that level of kindness. I want to see that level of connection because it outweighs all of the negative that you see on a daily basis. Yep. So be a Mr. Al. And that's a pretty cool power uh, to I, have. I hate to break it to you, but there's a spider the size of a horse over top of your head, Mike. Yeah, like right up there it. behind you. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's huge. My heart almost exploded. But, <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's a really big spider. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really big spider. I might have to burn your whole house down, Laura. I'm really sorry. Joe, do it first. Yeah. Joe will do it before yeah. you do. Yeah. Anyway, be a Mr. Al. Be the joy and the kindness you want to see. Spread that on. You have that power. You have that power. You also have the power to be a squirrel, so don't be a squirrel. Don't be a squirrel. And you have the power to follow two beautiful people online that, that love you, too. So That are not squirrels. That are not squirrels. That'll be your cheerleader. And they're not going to get eaten by spiders, hopefully. <laughs> the size of a horse. Oh, you know what's boy. interesting? Oh my, it's going up. That's a big spider. That's a really big spider. It's, oh! There's no joke. That's a big <laughs> that spider. That was a net. That was a net. Oh. Okay, well. It's like now making a way to the left. How big is this it's web? web? It's making its web. I mean, is there a way to get a shot on that joke? Oh, he I have it. Oh, oh hey. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? It's right, I mean, like, it's it's yeah. right there just. Oh, there he is. Oh, I lost focus. Oh, 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 there we're there losing focus. It, you're not going to be able to burn it. It's too far away. It can't even feel it. Don't burn the thing. Let it catch all the nets. You know, it's catching all the all the insects. Girl, if that falls on me, I'm I'm moving. <laughs> he tried to burn. He it. did. He tried to come for you. See what I did there? You still, see what I did there? He's still alive. No, he did. Okay. He's well. wrapped up in his web. Okay. He's still alive. Huh. Hopefully, he doesn't kill me. I tried. I, I tried. mean, I am a big feast, as one would say. I'm a big feast. <laughs> Is he moving? <laughs> it'll, take, it'll take a lot of days to get through this body. I'm anyway. Whew. Thank you. Oh, let's talk about the next episode of Tasty Thursday. Oh yes, please. Bing bong. Yeah. Because Tasty Thursday is, it's beautiful. Hmm. What we got? He's just chilling there. He's just chilling. Chilling like a villain. Can we do it Friday the 22nd instead of Thursday? The 21st. And somebody said, can we see Joe with this V-neck? <laughs> with the what? Can we see Joe with his V-neck? Turn it around. Oh, Joe, come on. Yeah. Come and get this V-neck. Come on. See if I have a shot of the Can we do the 22nd, which is a Friday? I don't think I have anything going on fri oh, that Friday. The lights in the way. Am I busy on that Friday? I don't think so, no. I don't think there's anything going on, so. Yeah. And then the next one will be October 19th. You know what October 19th what are the dates? is? Tell me the dates, because I got some travel coming up. Oh, it's up. your name day. Laura, what are the dates? What about the 22nd of September? Mm, I might be gone that week. I'll let you know, though. It's a Friday. But it, oh, no. That's, oh, it's Tasty Friday. I'll be back. Come back Friday mornings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 that works. I'll let you know. Tentative date, the 22nd of okay. September. Yeah. And yeah. I'm thinking here. Listen, here's what I'm thinking, okay? I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking, okay? Here's what I'm thinking. Soup and Sammy. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a s'mores action with a light flyer right there. Maybe I'll make something s'mores you like a drink s'more. Oh, we'll get the, uh, yeah, you got to do it right <gasps> outside the pergola. A chocolate espresso martini. Yes, chocolate espresso martini. I don't know how to make that, but I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to get good at it from now till then. I will be destroyed. If I have a martini, there I will go. be I not only in the next zip code. Here. I gotta take care of. I gotta. I gotta shave this little patch. Not right. only in the next zip code, I'll be. In, <laughs> You'll be buzzing because. I'll be in a different country. Okay? We'll find her running Last through the vineyard. Last time I had a martini, I'm gonna tell you what happened right quick. <laughs> I can't. Last time I had a slew of martinis was at a place called Casa Tua. I oh, I, heard, I know I know place. Yep. Yep. Let's just say I do not know how to walk on water. You should definitely not get out of a moving vehicle. Where's it at? It oh, it's there. It's, it's not that I told you. It's, ah! it's coming near us. No. Now it's over there. Oh, it's going to crawl go, oh, go by my head. That's why I'm going to just... I'm going to eat a Sammy. Anyway, and corn. all that to say, <laughs> martinis and I don't mix. We got to develop that little little crack over there. that spider. Just so right. we'll post it on. We're going we're gonna to exit, exit because I'm scared. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's be let's be good people. Let's feed the chickens on Joe's chicken camera. Mm. Let's uh, eat some beautiful foods here. Um, hi to Spurtle. Hi to Brenda. 
All my people. Mm, let's cook corn. And uh, let's eat some corn and relax. Mm-hmm. So next one. All right, everybody. Cheers. 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 Some good.